Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to create a virtual tour using teleportme.com. Now in this video, I'm going to go over everything that you need to do to create a virtual tour from start to finish. There will be some features that are going to be in separate individual videos. So if I'm talking about a feature that I'm not explaining here, chances are there's going to be a separate video for you to watch where I go more into depth on that. But for this video, this is going to be creating the virtual tour from start to finish. All right, so let's get on with it. To start, you're gonna come in here. Once you log in, you're gonna be in your dashboard. And in your dashboard, it's gonna show everything that you have and an option to create a new tour. So let's go ahead and click on create new tour. Here you can put your, your name of your tour in. You can choose whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it tutorial. And here you can put a description in. If you want to, it is, it is optional. And default brand kit, you can choose different brand kits that you can configure and set up for different reasons. Like if you have a specific client that you do a lot for and they have a certain like images and branding and whatnot, you can just create a brand kit um, in a virtual tour and I'll show you that in a separate video. Now here you have your privacy. You can go unlisted, private or public. Now, if you're doing for instance, real estate or even commercial uh, virtual tours, you don't want it to be public until your client is ready to make it public. So that that's what you would do here. You can keep it private where it's only viewable by yourself, or you can do unlisted where it's not being fed out to uh, search engines and whatnot, but you can still share it with your client. So for this one, I'm just gonna keep it as private and I'm gonna click create. And it brings you into here. And this is where you upload your panoramas. So you could just simply drag and drop, or you can click here and it'll bring you to uh, uh, where you can locate your files and select them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop right into there. And I'm just gonna do three uh, panels for this uh, tutorial. And it's gonna go through and do its upload. All right, so here we go. They're all uploaded here, uh, but you want to rearrange or reorder your panels because you want your first panel for your viewers to be the first panel in this list. So you wanna click on reorder, drag and drop. Now this is an aerial of the exterior of the property. I want that to be my first initial view of the virtual tour. So that needs to be here. The next view would be the entry into the house, which is gonna be my second one. And then I have just a kitchen in here, which, you know, and you would organize this in a, a linear order from start to finish of kind of the way you want the, the tour to flow. So now that that's done, you just simply click save order. There we go. Now, if you look up here, you have, you can also upload more. You can create folder. What's create folder? Well, create folder is you can create different folders for, for panos. And I will go more into this at a, at a future time in, in a, a separate video. But for the most part, if you have like a large commercial property that you're doing, and let's say you're doing like the lobby and some law offices, but the building also has like a kitchen or a gym area. Well, you can simply create folders. One would be for lobby. One would be for the law offices. The other one would be for the, the gymnasium and you can create those and put those panels into there and it keeps it nice in order and it makes it easier to navigate later on when you're viewing the virtual tour. All right, so I'm gonna come up here into edit because now I'm all done rearranging. And here we are in the brand new Teleport Me editor. And boy, I tell you, it really has gotten so much more improved. It was good before, it's even better now. So, all right, first panel. So first one's gonna pop up. And of course it's an aerial 360. 
and you might be looking at it and it doesn't look very good. Well, the reason behind that is, is when you're in the editor, as you see over here, load low res if available for editor. Um, putting it into low res is probably your best choice for editing because once you upload, it's going to actually be dissecting the photo, the panorama into squares and it's going to be rendering it and it's going to be doing a lot of stuff on the back end. So it's probably easier and faster and more efficient to just leave it in the low res mode while you're editing. Okay, so now if you see here, this is a little bullseye target. This is your initial position. This would be the view that a viewer would see right off the bat. And being that this is an aerial, it's not a very good viewpoint. So there's a couple ways that you can go about this to fix it. And the reason I say that th this is not good is because when you first come in here, you're looking around, you're like, okay, where am I supposed to go? Where's the property? You know, what, so a viewer is just going to have a right off the start, kind of a bad experience because they're trying to find where they're supposed to click, or what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to be clicking here, but it starts up here and it's not even in the shot. So here's what we can do for that. You can simply grab it, drag it down onto there. And there you go. You're, that's going to be your initial position. Easy, right? I agree. But there's another way you can do it too if you don't want to like, you know, if it's like far off to the side, you don't want to drag, pan, drag, pan, then place it. You can simply come up into panorama here. And I just went ahead and reset that so I can show you. And you can choose the view that you want. So like right here is the view that I want for my client and their clients. So I'm going to click set initial position. Bam, there you go, done. Super simple, super easy. So now they come in and they are immediately looking at the property for the virtual tour. And there is going to be uh, hotspots set up on here so that they can easily navigate. But they also can, you know, look around and see the beautiful area around this and still remember that down here is where they have to click. So. Okay, so now the next thing here is under the panorama tab right here. Um, you can see it has a title of Arial and then it has a description under here of what it is, the number and all this other stuff. It's actually the, the file path of my photo. Well, we don't want that in there. So let's go ahead and just delete that just like so. And now that's done. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to add a hotspot, right? Let's go move on to the next panel, which would be uh, the entry hall. So you click on add new. There we go. Here is add new. And you don't really like this, this uh, hotspot icon. So you can come up right up to here to icon and you can select the one that you want. But if you go and you make another hotspot, it's going to revert back to the default. Well, that, that might not be what you want. You don't want, you want consistency. So you want them all to be kind of similar so you don't confuse the person that's viewing it. So what you would end up doing here is come over here to tour and you can come down to default hotspots. And as you see here, this is the icon and you can just choose and select. So now every single hotspot that you create throughout this tour is going to be the one that you prefer. All right, now let's move this into a location that we want. So that's the entryway right there. Now this is a little bit too big for me. So I'm just going to bring down the size. I think that size is perfect. Now this little target initial position is not going to be in your virtual tour. So don't worry about that. That's just in the editor only. Um, so I got this to the size that I want. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on link. And I'm going to link it to the entry hall. There we go. Now, as you notice, it's the initial position of this view right here is coming in from up above because I'm in an aerial. And teleport me is amazing and knows that I'm actually elevated in this panorama because of the way that I'm tilting my angle from because I'm going down 
with my view. So it knows that the next view should be pointing down. Well, you don't really want that in this particular situation. So what do you do? Well, you click on set right here for the view direction and you just simply move it around to the view that you prefer. And then you click save. And this right here is your reverse hotspot option. Uh, that I will go into a different video about most likely, but it's really pretty simple. A reverse hotspot, just simply you click that and it creates a hotspot at this panel that's going to link back to this one. So maybe I won't make another video of this. So you just click on that and bam, it says right up here, hotspot added, done. That's all you have to do. So now I'm going to move over to my next panorama here. And as you see, initial position is right here. Um, and here's the, the, the back hotspot that I created. So I'm just going to set that on the door there. Now you can individually change this one. If you want to do like a door feature here, there we go. So it's showing you that it's a door and that's not going to change any other of your hotspots throughout the tour. It's just that one. So now I want to go up in here and I want to change this to entry and get rid of the description. And there we go. Now that's saved like that. So the next step would be to set your north position. And north position is going to help with the transition in between your uh, panoramas. So if you're facing a direction like this and you click onto a uh, hotspot over here, it's going to move you into your next uh, panorama at the same viewing angle, roughly. So it just looks a lot smoother. So here is your initial position. And if you look here, it says north and it has this little bar coming up and down. And this is a set your, your north face, your north setting. And it's called north because a lot of people doing panoramas generally will put their initial um, image grab at facing north on every one of them. And the purpose of that is that it lines everything up properly. But you don't necessarily have to do north every single time. What I do is I just remember I always shoot towards the back of the house. So I don't know if that's north. I don't know if that's south. I mean, I, I could probably look at my Apple Watch and I could probably tell you which direction it is. But it doesn't really matter because I just remember that I always shoot to the rear of the house. So that's the way all my panels line up as much as I can. And sometimes that's just not possible. You're down in the basement, there's no windows, and you get turned around, and you're not really paying attention, and you end up shooting in a completely opposite direction. But this is how you can fix that. So here, you can simply just drag this around, and you make every pano face the same direction. Like, if I come back here to my aerial, you'll notice that my initial, my camera is actually set, towards the back of the house. So that's the same there as it is in this panel. And then if I go into the kitchen here, you'll notice it's set to the back of the house. So all my panels right here are lined up properly. So you don't have to mess around too much with this, but if just so happens that this panel in the kitchen was facing south, then I would just simply come in here and point it towards north and they put a little compass down here to kind of help guide you so back at the entry here i want to add another hotspot. and if you notice that didn't save because i forgot to hit there we go okay um if we come back here i want to add another hot spot so i'm going to add a new one here for the kitchen just like before and i'm going to choose kitchen so over here, again, you choose your view direction that you want, which this actually is very accurate from this hot spot into there. And as you can see, as you move the hotspot icon, the view direction changes to be more accurate to where you're standing. So if I stand right here and I grab this, it's going to move around to 
pretty much, and you can see just how accurate it is for the most part. I, I'm putting this directly onto the, the stoves and it's almost making that perfectly like centered to the view, which is really, really cool. It does a very good job. Uh, Teleport Me has done a very good job with, with, with doing that spatial awareness type stuff with this. Okay, so I'm going to set the view to there, which is good, but I want to do a, a back hotspot. I want to set another one going backwards. So I'm just going to hit set, and I'm happy with where this is sitting right now, so I'm going to click save, and I'm going to do a reverse hotspot. So now it created a reverse hotspot from that perspective, from that view direction, just backwards. And if we come over into here, you'll see it's a tiny bit off, but only takes a second to fix. And just like that, you have a hot spot going back. So it saves you a lot of time. Uh, the way it was before and with some other um, virtual tour creation, you don't have that option for a reverse hotspot. So then you have to go through and add another hotspot. And it might not sound like a huge deal, but when you're dealing with a big property where you have 50 panos to deal with, that's 50 more hotspots that you have to create. So if you add it up, it actually adds quite a bit of significant time savings by having that reverse hotspot. All right, so another thing I want to discuss, and you can kind of see it right now, my pano is a little unleveled. So if I come up into here into panorama, I am going to click on horizon correction. And it puts a nice little grid up so that it makes it nice and easy for you to see what is supposed to be level. And as you can see, this isn't exactly level right here. Now, this is a, a bay window, so it kind of sticks out. So, yes, that's going to be at an angle. But I'm looking at this section right here. It's just a little bit off. And you can kind of see it here on the counter. So, uh, this should be roll. There we go. And you can just simply adjust it a little bit to kind of straighten it out. There we go. Kind of give it a, a nicer level view down here. As you can see, this is pretty level now. And then you want to turn sideways, 90 degrees. And make sure that that is all nice and level which would be at this point, it would be pitch that you can change this way. Door looks good. There we go. So now you're leveled. You just simply select save and now it's saved. I'm going to move back into the entryway and we're going to look at that here. Now, when things are up close, like when you have your camera up close to like walls and stuff like that, it can be a little bit difficult to figure out what is actually supposed to be level, but you can also go by your verticals. Um, so if your horizontals aren't level, your verticals aren't going to be level as well. So a really cool way of doing this to make sure that your camera is centered perfectly is just come up here and hit reset initial position and now it's going to put you dead center straight on looking so that you can see if anything is out of whack in this out of alignment in this panel right here looking at your horizontals and your verticals that's going to be what you want to adjust because if you notice if you kind of move down at an angle there goes your vertical so if you're off by just a little bit from center it looks like things are actually not centered. So just make sure you center yourself first and then do your leveling. So let's go in and try that again in the kitchen here. So this is my initial position. This is straight. I'm going to click it again. Okay. And for the most part, I would say everything looks good enough. I got, I got straight verticals here. Uh, this is just because of the angle of where my camera is actually sitting. It looks like this is actually unleveled but it actually isn't it isn't all right so you got your hot spots in you did some horizon leveling you added uh you know some reverse hot spots or some back hot spots however you want to call it and you want to go and check it out 
So the best thing to do and the easiest way to do it is just come right up here to this little icon here. It's an eyeball icon and it has a little dialog box that pops up and says preview. Simply click preview and just look at everything. Now, when you do a preview, it is going to be in full resolution. So let's go ahead and just look, make sure everything looks right. That, that's one of the most important things after you create a virtual tour is you want to make sure you go through it with a fine tooth comb like you were a viewer and just make sure that everything is perfect. That nothing's left out. Nothing is missed. Like, so for instance, I just noticed that I missed something. If you look up here, the description is still showing the file path for this photo. So now I know I need to fix that. So you could just simply go right into here. Just delete that and select out of it. And there you go. Details are now updated. Go ahead and click the save button. And come into preview again. There we go. It's fixed. So let's move into here. Okay. The initial view looks perfect. This hot spot here is working. Good. Go back through there. Everything looks all right in here. Verticals look good. Quality looks amazing with that Tricio camera. All right, and then I'm gonna move into the kitchen. There we go. Vertical and horizontals look good. Hot spots there. And that's pretty much how to make a basic virtual tour. So after you've gone through and you made sure everything looks right and it's, it's working perfectly and the hotspots are actually going to where they're supposed to. Okay, so we have everything pretty much set up. We have our north face set up, our north alignment. We have our back uh, hotspots, our reverse hotspots done. We have our descriptions all taken care of, our titles taken care of. So what's next? What would you do next? Well, this is what we're going to do. We're actually going to go into the next tab, which is tour. And we are going to here, you can do the search engine optimization. Uh, and pretty much what that is, is like your title and your description, but you can add all the stuff in there. And that really helps for search engines to find this and get you more views and more hits. So this is, it, this can be very, very important right here, especially for uh, like, commercial properties where they want to draw more attention to their business. So that's a very, very important thing here. Um, Favicon. Favicon is just something that you can choose to put up here in the top. So um, I'm just going to grab, let's just grab that there. That's going to be my Favicon for this uh, tour. And that's going to be, you know, you're going to see right up here in the top, as you can see, has a nice little logo on there. So if the company that you're doing this for has a logo or the agent that you're working for wants his uh, broker uh, icon up there, you can always add that in there. Uh, theme, walkthrough, listing, or none. So the walkthrough theme is gonna be like this right here. And if you switch it to listing, it's just gonna put all your panels off to the right. Uh, which this actually is kind of nice if you're running folders. Personally, I kind of prefer my walkthrough. It just seems a lot smoother and a lot easier to go through. Navigation type. Now, this is where the north, the north setting comes into play. If you have it set to manual, then it doesn't matter what your perspective is in a pano. The next one is not going to change. It's just going to kind of uh, stick to what you have your initial position set to. But if you change it to automatic, it will change the view direction to match the view of the previous panel. Um, so if I'm facing over here and I click on that, it would actually, I would be looking off into that direction or if I face this direction and I click that, I'd be facing the door. So it, it makes for a very, very nice transition between the panoramas. Pano details, that's going to be this up here. So if you want to have the title of each pano visible with a description, you would simply choose pano details on or off. That's all just a personal preference. Uh, the info icon is this right here, 
which would bring up the information on the virtual tour. So agent name or business name, uh, their description, you know, all that fun stuff, pretty much like this stuff right here would be in the info icon. Uh, there is a screenshot icon that you can put right here, puts a little camera icon here. And what that allows for is pretty much what it says. It's going to take a screenshot of the view that you have. So it allows a person to sit there and say, wow, this is really, really cool. They can click that and it'll actually go through and take a snapshot of, of that view. And then they actually put some nice little things on there where you can crop it, resize it. Uh, you can rotate it. You can draw on it, which is kind of cool. You can write little text. Like so. You can change your colors. That's black. You can change the size. So, I mean, there's just some cool little things that they that they have in here for, for people to to use and then you can download it and save it uh one thing that that actually is kind of handy in a pinch is if you are also doing photography and you somehow forgot to get a shot it happens it, it happens more often than i like to admit um you're just trying to go through and who knows you got clients you got the clients clients or the homeowners or the business owners or whatever and you're trying to do your work but you're distracted and you forget to get, take a picture of the kitchen well you can use this from your virtual tour and add that into your regular photo so it can save you it can save you from not having to go back and take another photo now the quality of it is not going to be quite the same as with a regular camera but for the most part for like mls or for a lot of things it might be just good enough to get by so remember that in case you forgot something because a 360 camera is not gonna is not gonna miss an angle at all and then vr mode vr mode of course that is for putting on using uh, virtual reality goggles it allows for a view for like the oculus and all those different types of uh, uh goggle virtual reality type systems so it makes it more immersive and, and kind of neat Another option here is the Nader. Sound is you can add music to your tour. Um, default hotspots, which we already went over, where you can change the, the hotspots for this tour. Sound, I, I generally don't do sound in my virtual tours, um, but some of them, you know, somebody might want it. And that pretty much what you do here is you, you choose the sound that you want, add it on there. And as you can see, they have, uh, um, auto, they already have preloaded default audio sounds here that you can click on and you can listen to and you can actually put in autoplay and loop autoplay is pretty much going to start playing when the pano is loaded and then you can also upload your own nader which is this view right here this is called your nader if you click on nader you can select an image and I'm just going to grab something here. Uh, there we go. And here comes my logo. And I can simply change the size of it. Now, one cool thing is, is that it actually moves. The perspective of it moves with the camera. So, as you can see, it's always legible. You can change that, though. If, so, for whatever reason, your photo is off from being like a different perspective or it's upside down or something like that, you can move your rotation here and choose the orientation that you like. And you can also make it a little less visible so it doesn't pop out if you, you know, if you want it to be subtle, you can do that as well. All right, so the next step after this would be going into your share icon. And what this is going to do, this is going to give you the link to share with your client or post or embed or put into something online. So like, as you can see here, select embed size and there's different sizes you can choose from. I normally go with fill. There we go. Cause it's going to fill the window. It's going to fill the screen. And for me, that seems to always work for clients and everything like that. So I choose fill, but if you want 
a specific size, you can always choose custom and you can choose the way, the width and the height that you need for a specific job. But I generally just go with fill. Uh, custom domain, custom domain is something that I will get into in another video. But for the most part, it allows for you to share your virtual tour with a different domain name up here. So if you want to use your business domain name or a client has a special need, a special request of, you know, a, spe a specific domain name, you can do that right here. All right. Split view. Split view is actually really, really cool. Split view is an option that I will go into in another video and twin view that that will be a separate video on its own, which you will see in the list here. But that just allows for you to actually have two panels of the same and you can do a split and it'll show like a before and after. Really, really good for uh, construction. So you can show, you can put the, the camera in the same exact spot and you can take a before of the building being made and then you can do an after where it's already made and it can show, it's very dramatic showing the difference. It's very, very cool. All right, so select virtual tour and then down here, you're gonna have an embed code and an embed code allows you to like embed it into specific um, websites and whatnot. Uh, it already has the iframe set up for you. So you just simply click on it and it's gonna automatically copy it to your clipboard and then you can paste it into wherever it is that you need to paste it. Uh, link right here, this is gonna give you the full on link. This right here will give you the MLS link. Now an MLS link is different because it won't have any branding. So like this icon up here will just go away. Not even gonna be there anymore because it's the MLS and MLS requires no branding, period. So it's gonna get rid of all that. It's gonna get rid of the address. It's gonna get rid of everything. Uh, social, this is gonna allow you to post to Facebook, Twitter, uh, and Reddit. And QR code. So you can actually send somebody a QR code that will bring them directly to a link to this. So you can use that for uh, a really big thing for, for QR codes is uh, like Airbnb, where they don't allow links, but you can put a QR code in there that will allow your client to actually go through or go through and just see the virtual tour of like an Airbnb. Okay, and that's it. That covers uh, the, the basics of creating a virtual tour. Please keep an eye out for the videos that I go into more deep detail more depth into the features of teleportme.com.